Hi guys, welcome again to Pathology in a Nutshell. I remain Dr. Ben and today we are going to be talking about genetic diseases. I'm going to generally give an overview of what genetic diseases are all about. But before we talk about genetic diseases, I'd like to tell us some fascinating things about the human genome. The Human Genome Project was started in 1990 and came to a conclusion in 2003. And the team was led by two great scientists, Francis Collins and Craig Venter. A lot of things were discovered after the project. And of course, a lot more are still being discovered. Some of these things that were discovered include the fact that the human genome is made up of about 3.2 billion, 3.2 billion base pairs, base pairs. Of course, I know we know what base pairs are, you know, A to C, A to T, and G to C. These are what base pairs are. And these base pairs are divided into those parts of the genome that code for protein, so the coding portion, okay, the coding portion and the non-coding portion, the non-coding portion, those parts that do not code for protein. And the coding portion just makes up about 1.5%, 1.5% of the entire genes in the human genome. And that is about 20,000 genes. So 20,000 genes are the genes that code four proteins, while the non-coding portions make up about 98.5%. Also, one of the things that was discovered after genetic sequencing is that the difference between any two humans, the difference in, the, in their genes between any two humans is actually just 0.5%, meaning that any two humans are about 99.5% percent identical and of course we expect this to be more in monozygotic um, twins all right now that we have seen how wonderful our genes are the fact that just 0.5 percent is what accounts for the differences that we see among humans is quite you know fascinating let's talk about what are those coding portions and what are those non-coding portions of the human genome. Of course, uh, the coding portions of our DNA, okay, so we have parts of the DNA that code for proteins, okay, we have our mRNA, mRNA, okay, that is responsible for transcription, and then we have our tRNA, tRNA that is responsible for translation okay now there are five components of the non-coding genes in the human genome and the first one are the promoters and enhancer portions of our dna okay so promoters promoters and enhancers okay we also have um binding sites binding sites for um, transcription factors, so binding sites for factors on our DNA or RNA, and then we have non-coding RNA, non-coding RNA, okay? Now, there are many non-coding RNAs in the human genome, but we're going to, I'm just going to list two major ones. The first is the microRNA, microRNA, which is miRNA, and then the next is the long non-coding RNA, long non-coding RNA, which is also designated lnRNA. Okay, then we also have mobile genetic elements. Mobile genetic elements are the fourth groups of um, 
non-coding portions of the DNA, mobile genetic elements. One example are the transposons, okay? And these elements have been nicknamed jumping genes because they can actually move from one gene to another. And finally, we have special parts of our DNA that do not code for protein. Examples are the telomeres, the telomeres, and of course the, the centromeres, the centromeres, okay? So these are the parts of our genome that are non-coding, okay? So just um, a brief overview. The, uh, our genome is made up of a coding portion and a non-coding portion. The coding portion just makes up about 1.5% of the entire human genome. And then the non-coding portion makes up about 98.5%. And these 1.5% are about 20 thousand protein coding genes okay and they, 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 they are composed of the dna the mrna and the trna and while the non-coding portions are made up of five components the promoters and enhancers binding sites for transcription factors non-coding rnas which are like the micro rnas and the long non-coding rnas mobile genetic elements and then special components of the dna that include telomeres and the centromeres so these are um, the divisions of the human genes. Next, we'll be talking about mutations. Mutations. Now, the reason why we have to talk about mutations is because mutations are actually the things that cause genetic diseases. So let's talk a little about mutations. So yes, let's talk about mutations. So what is a mutation? What is a mutation? A mutation is simply a permanent change, a permanent change in DNA. That is what a mutation is, okay? And these mutations can happen in somatic cells, okay? Somatic cells. Or it can happen in germ cells, germ cells. And the germ cells are what? The spermatozoa. Okay, and of course, the ovum, the ovum, okay? So sperm cells and the ovum are what make up germ cells. And when mutations happen in these cells, we say that those mutations are germline mutations. They are germline mutations. And these mutations are hereditary because they can be transferred from parents to their offsprings, hereditary hereditary okay they can be transferred from their parents from parents to offspring why somatic mutations are not hereditary because they cannot move from one generation to another so these are some of the things we need to know about mutations again mutations can be classified based on the kind of or the nature of mutations okay one kind of mutation is what we call the point point mutation point mutation okay now what happens in point mutation is a replacement a replacement a replacement of one base pair one base pair with another base pair and one classical example of a point mutation is what we see happen in sickle cell anemia where, where thiamine replaces adenine. And of course, what happens when this re replacement happens or when this replacement comes about is that, of course, the protein um, polypeptide changes. The polypeptide changes, okay? The polypeptide that is produced changes okay so because there's an amino acid that is replacing another now this this codon this codon codes for glutamic acid okay glutamic acid while this one codes for valine okay so a single base replacement will change the entire amino um the amino acid and that will change the the polypeptide 
that is being produced. That is an example of a point mutation. Okay? And a point mutation can be a missense mutation. Point mutation can be it can be missense. It can be a missense mutation or it can be a nonsense mutation. A nonsense mutation. Okay? Now, in nonsense mutation, no polypeptide is formed. No polypeptide is formed or no protein is formed. Okay? No pro polypeptide is formed. And that is because the mutation leads to a stop codon. Okay? So, so the mutation induces a stop in the translation. Okay? So no polypeptide is formed. But in missense, there is a polypeptide or there is a protein that is formed. Are we clear? There is a protein that is formed in missense mutation. Now, if the protein retains the function of the original protein that is supposed to be produced, if the protein retains the function of the original protein that is supposed to be produced, we call that missense mutation conservative. It is conservative. And if the missense mutation produces a protein that has, that, that has no relationship with the function of the original protein that should have been formed, it is called a non-conservative mutation. A non-conservative mutation. Non-conservative mutation. Okay. Now, that is that about point mutation. Now, another kind of mutations that we can see are either the insertions and the deletions. The insertions and the deletions. For us to understand what happens with insertions and deletions, I would like to remind us of what the codon, the coding sequence, or what the reading frame of the mRNA is. Okay, so let us assume that this is a strand of mRNA. And of course, you know that this tree will form a codon, the next tree will form a codon, the next tree will form a codon. Now, the tRNA carrying an amino acid, okay, also has an anticodon that binds to its complementary codon and releases the amino acid so that the next tRNA will come to bind to the next complementary codon and release the amino acid that is for that uh, codon. With that, a peptide bond, peptide bonds begin to form between the amino acids and of course, a peptide is formed. Okay, so as that continues to happen, as that continues to happen, the peptide is form formed and of course moves on into the endoplasmic reticulum for folding and for other advanced modifications. Now, the mutations we are about to talk about are deletions, deletions or insertions. Insertions. In a situation where we have a deletion, what happens is the T the, the tRNA begins to read from the second Y, from this second base. And of course, it will read instead of reading these three, these three, it will not read these three, but then it will now read these three. You see what has happened, okay? The reading frame has shifted because one base has been removed. And what happens is that the peptide that is going to be formed will be entirely different from what was supposed to be formed. The same will happen if, for example, there is an insertion somewhere. That insertion will change the reading frame. Okay, leading to the development or the generation of an entirely different peptide. This kind of mutation or these kind of changes 
lead to what we call a frame shift mutation. A frame shift mutation. Okay, and that is because the reading frame has actually shifted as a result of either insertion or deletion of a base. I hope we understand what has just happened there. And these mutations can happen in coding regions and they can happen in non-coding regions. Now, the importance of mutations in non-coding regions is because they are responsible for regulation of gene expression. And so if there's a defect or if there's a problem with their production, regulation of genes can be affected and that can also lead to what? To genetic diseases. Okay, so these are the common mutations that happen in DNA that can happen also in mRNA. Okay, other forms of mutations can happen in other parts of the genome. Sometimes there are certain alterations. These alterations can also lead to genetic diseases. Examples include chromosomal um, changes, chromosomal changes like translocations translocations okay where a component of one chromosome moves and attaches to another chromosome and that may lead to the production of an abnormal protein that can lead to disease one common translocation is the translocation between chromosome 9 translocation between chromosome 9 and 22 which we call the Philadelphia chromosome that is seen in chronic myeloid um, leukemia. Okay, so translocations can happen. Even deletions, deletions of portions of chromosomes can happen. Okay, we can even have inversions, inversions, and a lot of, a lot of other um, genetic or a lot of other chromosomal alterations. And this may lead to either amplification of function of certain um, components of the gene or even loss of function of certain components of the gene. And that is basically it about mutations.